Hey guys, welcome back to Solo Leveling Arise. In today's video, we've got a bit of a treat in this video. We are doing the Hunter tier list in this one, but we do have a fantastic guest on with Painblade. Now, if you're into this game, definitely go over and check out this man's channel. Uh, he has been sweating super hard in this game for basically ever since the Canadian launch. He has got the biggest roster I've seen of videos for this game. And if there's anything you want to know, I believe, if I'm correct, you're going to be streaming at the launch of the game as well. Is that correct? I am. I am. Absolutely. Yeah, that's he'll, correct. He'll be streaming. So if you want to go catch him streaming, he will be doing that. I will not be streaming the launch personally. My internet sucks and we got Star Rail stuff. It's too busy. But... Go show this man some love. He's got all the knowledge for the game. He's sweated through a pay-to-win account, a full free-to-play account. He has got a ton of knowledge, and that's why we've got him here to go ahead and discuss this tier list. Also, before we go any further, I have to give a massive shout-out to Pridewin uh, for putting this tier list on their website. I'll leave a link to it in the description. Um, Antil is a great bloke, worked with him since probably Nikkei, and he does a great job of managing this site. And also to Giku to finalize the, the credits, who also helped out on this one, and he is doing coverage of solo leveling. So go show Giku some love. If you played Black Clover, you definitely know who Giku is. And the final thing before we get into it, we are going to do for New Game Hype, we're going to do a $100 giveaway in this video. Just be subscribed, leave a comment, you'll go into the draw. I'll announce the winner about a week away in a community post. And that is everything. Painblade, that was a long ass intro. How you doing, man? I'm good, bro. Thank you for having me. You know, those kind of intros are the best kind of intros because you pretty much covered every single thing. So thank you, first off, for having us on here, Vulcan. I'm super excited, bro. Nothing like a global launch day, especially for a hype game like this. I'm happy you're covering my man, and I'm happy to be on here. So I'm super psyched. Let's get this going. Definitely, yeah. And, dude, like, I'm just super excited for this game because, dude, the re-rolling process is just mint, and I cannot wait. I've got seven devices at home installed with the game ready to re-roll. It's going to be fun. Now, we are actually recording this, like, three hours before uh, the global release. Right. So this is super fresh. Now, when we look at this tier list, we're just going to go through, talk about our own experience with these characters and stuff like that um and basically give you guys as much insight as we can but just keep in mind i'll let you explain what you found out in the game that they have then later acknowledged as a bug in the game which could be something big that will change this so i'll let you take it away and what you found yeah sure so first off shout out to geku on this one he and i talked a lot about tier lists so this is going to be very close to resembling the tier list that i made as well too so i'm, I'm really happy it looks as accurate as it does there are going to be a couple multiple changes here due to exactly what you mentioned that massive bug so what we did when i did my testing is we found that uh crit damage overall as a stat was turned off so in the game essentially just to make it simple simplified everybody has a 50 percent base crit damage stat the moment you add more to that stat, it doesn't work. It just stops at 50%. So you can go to 180%, it never worked. So I did multiple testing, I have videos to show that, and there's a video out there called Crit Damage Doesn't Work. You can watch that if you wanna see the proof. Uh, and then the moment we put that video out, Netmarble acknowledged that it doesn't work with their PR terminology and admitted it doesn't work. So as of today, that hopefully will be fixed and we'll see a massive change in the amount of damage every unit does, except for one which is going to be Choi Jong-in because he doesn't crit. Yeah. So this tier list may see a little bit of an alteration, most likely a lot of an alteration, to be honest. Uh, so we will definitely give you guys a fresh look now with that in mind, plus, like you said, a future update with the actual numbers. Yeah, because like for my playthrough, I got Choi. I actually got one dupe of Choi on my free-to-play. And the dude just felt yeah. ridiculous compared to anything else. And it really it makes sense same. why he was so crazy when the others weren't benefiting Absolutely. from crit. And his passive is that he can't crit, but he just gets extra raw damage. So it kind of makes sense. So he is probably the one who's going to be the biggest loser once all this irons out. Yeah. Uh, also, massive totally. fine by you. That's like a huge, that's a huge <laughs> gotcha moment for them. Like what? Yeah, the yeah. Shout out, shout out to a lot of the folks that figured that one out with me as well too, because we we're a lot of us were testing, and so, you know we have the platform Volk, you and I, we can show people. So shout out to the community for coming together on this one. Um, some folks reached out to me and I did my own testing and we all came to the same conclusion. So this was definitely a collaborative effort. And I'm honestly, I'm happy that Netmarble acknowledged it as quick as they did. Not happy they haven't fixed it, but we're hoping to see that fixed today. Because from a business perspective, if Cha doesn't get crit damage, she's useless. Yeah, so let's because, hope because it. Cha is one who is not on this list because we haven't had her. We can't play with her. We can't place her on a list. That's My right. guess would be if you're doing a global launch with a hype character like Char, she's going to be S plus tier. <laughs> that would be my assumption. Uh, like you don't make 100%. a character that's that hype on launch, a bad character totally. who is your first launch banner, but she is going to be crit based. 100%. So like you said, hopefully she, she the, the, the system works so that she does have her time yeah. to shine. But 
But let's go through totally. everyone else first of all. Mm-hmm. Now, I'll, I'll let you mm-hmm. kick it off. Uh, you tell us what you think about Min, because uh, I have my thoughts about him as well. Sure. Okay. So Min byung Gu is going to be a character that definitely belongs where he is. So this is a perfect st- uh, status for him. Now, the reason a lot of people don't understand how to use Min is they p- place him as a healer first rather than what he's actually there for, which is a buffer and debuffer. He's the ultimate buffer and debuffer. And what makes him so good is not the healing. So what he does when you use him as a support for uh, Sun Junu is he will do a, a debuff called Punishment when he comes in, which will last for 20 to 30 seconds. And it lets you hit the opponent for 15% more damage the entire duration of that debuff now when you use him as a hunter on the other hand with his ultimate he re- he increases everyone's crit rate he increases everyone's damage output for by i think it's 12 to 20 percent depending on the a level and then also he also gives you his crit damage uh, stat after 40 percent. so let's say you have 180 percent anything after the 40 percent mark you get as a crit damage raw stat for the rest of your team so he's actually built to be the ultimate dps buffer yeah. not to mention He's the perfect unit for Cha because at his A1 level, he gives everybody on the team 8% crit rate, but gives light units 12% crit rate. So he's actually built to be with her. So people use him, unfortunately, in the correct way as a healer. He's not a healer. He is meant to be the ultimate buffer. So anytime you see any whale or a free-to-play player kill the time battles, he's always on that team. So this is a perfect standing for him as an S-plus character. Yeah, and and just for uh, those who don't know, coming new into the game, obviously, with fresh release, when he talks about Mm -hmm. A-levels, he's talking about Ascensions, which is your dupes. Yes. But just keep in mind with this game, the way the standard banner has a wish list and the amount of standard banner summons you get, getting a dupe into these characters is not as hard as you see in some other games so the the dupe totally. the dupe levels are actually important ones and a lot of characters have a really decent first dupe which is a huge thing so just to, just so you can when you compare it to other games just know that this game is a bit different in the summon income and the fact that you have a rate up on the standard banner which allows you to target these things a lot better obviously rng is still a thing but the other thing with him is once again like you mentioned with crit not working properly he his stocks just go up further once that gets fixed and that Absolutely. could be why some people were seeing him as not as great of the buffing aspect because the just the the feel when you just test that stuff when you don't know something's not working it just doesn't feel as strong as some of the other debuffing exactly. units. So the other thing is the oh. healing is clutch. It's just because I, I didn't get him and it kind of forced me to really, really play dodges, which without him, it does kind of make <laughs> you feel like you do learn to play the game a bit better because you don't have that safety net, but it is a super nice safety net because it's not one of those games where you're going to be doing a ton. Like people will do no damage runs, but often you've got so many ads in the fights that you're just going to be taking some chip damage anyway. And that healing yep. is just, and you'll see healing numbers in this game feel like look super low when you look at the numbers uh, on the skills, but that's because it's more meant to heal the chip damage instead of like, fully heal someone because you're meant to avoid the bulk of the damage but chip damage sometimes can't be avoided so that's the way i look at that and yeah he's just an absolutely fantastic unit now yeah and not to mention one other thing i did mention sorry volk is he also gives power gauge increase which is your ultimate bar increase so i forgot to mention that so he literally does everything as a buffer so yeah absolutely and you're you're totally right about the healing it's all about chip damage because you swap in and out so much in this game that it will save your ass many times yep and then for for Bake now or Beck, dude, I suck at names in this game. I've read the man. I watched the <laughs> anime. Worry, so do I, I still <laughs> suck so bad. But the Beast mm-hmm, version, mm-hmm. just something to note. Uh, we won't go too in depth into him and Choi because their banners have left. They don't go onto the standard banner, so they will be back in the future. So we'll just go a brief rundown on those two because it's not going to be really applicable to the global launch players. Well, so just a, just one quick little thing. For Beck, he still exists for seven more days, actually. So he will be going hand-in-hand hand with Cha. You can actually still summon for him for the next seven days. Oh, I thought on their notice they said the banner was ending. I didn't check the time properly. No, so that that's his that's his event. His event is ending for his weapon, but his actual banner will stick around. Apparently, that's what they're saying. Okay. Because there's still seven days left on that banner. So we may still see him. We'll wait and see, yeah. And obviously, Payne mm-hmm. will do videos. I'll do videos talking about the comparison of the two once they come out because we, yep. we can't say which one's better to pull for when we don't know what Char does. I'm still going to go for Char will be better based on just 
launch hype, but we'll wait and see. But yeah, okay, g give me your rundown on him because I pulled him my free to play, played with him a bit, uh, but my mate's account who I've been testing like a bunch of like higher level characters, he didn't pull for him. So I'm curious to see what you think because he seems like one of those characters with a higher-ish skill cap because you want to keep him low HP without dying to maximize his damage. However, he doesn't really oh, yeah. have any supportive functions. So he feels like a raw DPS unit with a decent skill cap, which to me leaves him prone to being power creep but I'm curious to hear your thoughts. So actually a couple, couple. that's a very good point. The power, the the skill level for him is actually much higher than most other units because of that reason. He doesn't have a life steal and his HP just drops drastically. So the main thing to note about him that we, when I did seven hours of testing live with, with the community with him, we found two things. Number one, because of the, the, the damage, crit damage removal option or the stat, we found that he was the second best DPS next to Choi. But it wasn't a big, margin of a huge air like a, a, a big margin so there were about four to five different enemy bars once they activate crit damage i can comfortably say he's going to be the top dps in the game now what makes him very unique is he has the, the the biggest bleed percentage of any unit out there so kang right below him if you look down the dark unit we'll talk about him shortly he has a six percent bleed max hp beck has a one percent bleed so that's an extra four percent bleed over everybody else um, so when we start getting to higher end content where bosses have 300, 400 bars of HP, you're going to see him shine. Like we're going to see him dominate for that reason alone. And he had an right? issue so, where his exclusive weapon was removing the bleed. Did they fix that? That's right. Yeah, yeah, they fixed that. So the next day that was fixed. And funny enough, that's where people thought the crit damage bug started, but it actually wasn't the case. Crit damage didn't work from day one. I went back to look at some old videos. So yeah, he will. Um, I think once they fix the crit damage buff, you're going to see him probably be the top DPS in the game because of that bleed when it comes down to bigger bosses and i think that's going to maintain for him for quite some time i think where cha is going to shine she's going to dominate in smaller smaller batches easier bosses and bosses that heal because she takes away healing power so yeah. i think beck is still a very safe unit to summon on but we don't know the full potential yet until that crit damage is fixed plus he looks like a savage which is just just the plus. he does look like a savage yeah that's right that's so, right so next one we have a choi now Choi, for me, we're not going to spend too long because he's not available. He will come back. Uh, he right. was like yep. the most enjoyable rotational player for me to play personally. Uh, I just loved getting uh, using his two abilities, getting his ult up. It resets his abilities. You use his two abilities. That's right. You swap him in. He puts a death break on the enemies. Uh, he's got that yep. death break when he's supporting as well. Like He just felt like a really good all-rounder. Like I said, his damage did feel insane compared to everyone else, but mm -hmm. we do know about that bug. But I still think think the amount of support he brings along with the fluidity uh even if his damage drops compared to other units he'd still be a pretty high priority what's your thoughts absolutely totally agree with all that and the, the you've covered pretty much everything that he offers as a unit and the beauty you have to remember in this game when we're rating these hunters is not just hunters on their own but also hunters for jinu as well right so because he does offer the defense down he does offer a burn option he has insanely high nuke it's mostly aoe he's still going to be one of the ultimate weapons in this game no pun intended with his actual alias um so yeah i still think he's going to be s plus tier i think his stock will drop compared to some other units but it doesn't take away from how good he actually is and not to mention once we do see the level of crit damage increase they may buff him in the future but as he stands right now because we can't compare him to anything else he is still the top dps in the game with with the bug in hand uh so yeah no i totally agree with that i think he belongs where he is the only other unit that actually has a better support for jinu is actually silver main beck uh silver main beck has a 20 percent attack increase for 20 seconds for jinu which is insanely powerful uh but Choi Choi is definitely up there as top tier unit he belongs where he is for sure yep and then emma i know my mate whose account i've been playing on heavily like emma was his favorite character uh she tanks yeah. she does a really like really face roll aoe type damage is Insane. kind of the way and she's just she just feels super easy and safe and to me she's a great one for new players getting into the game oh my God. because she's fun to play she feels impactful uh, and she's not too complicated. So it allows you to play the game and learn core mechanics without getting too um, stressed about the play style of something like Silvermane or something like that. 
Yeah, yeah, perfect summary. That's exactly it. So if you looked at my Ultimate Beginner's Guide, the first two units I saved to summon on is Emma and, uh, and Sal, who's next to, next to her right there. Uh, so Emma, you, you said it perfectly. She is a face roll unit. Literally, she has a four-second AoE that, first off, leaves burns all over the ground. So if other adds get summoned, they'll instantly die from the burns. Uh, she puts a shield on herself when she does that. She does insane amounts of damage. Not, not to mention, she also activates her core damage with that Ultimate or with that AoE. So she does crazy basic damage as well to building her gauge up. So... Yeah, you're totally right, man. She does. She is the total package, and she's a break unit. Not to mention, so she yeah. breaks bars as well too. So yeah, absolutely the friendliest unit in the game for beginners, and should be the one that most people should re-roll for when it comes down to clearing stages and AOE map mobs. So yeah, well, well put. Yeah, I'd say I'm I'm a sweaty re-roller. So when I look at re-rolling, I'm going for a uh, a char and her ideally mm. <laughs> or char mm -hmm. and min <laughs> those are the kind of combos i'm looking for but i'm i'm way too sweaty on that shit uh all right you, you, you enjoy you, that four hours <laughs> yeah man I, i'm gonna love every second <laughs> all right you take it away with uh gee we I, I do once again i can't say names but uh you take it away no with no that's okay her. Yeah, for sure. So, um, so Sao or Saw, and I apologize to all the Koreans, you guys can correct me still to this day. So it's either Saw or Sao. Uh, so she is actually going to be one of the most uh, important characters on your roster because she's the only SSR water unit that's available at the moment and is literally considered the Cerberus killer. And if you don't know what Cerberus is, that is a boss you'll be farming end game to get some of the best gear out there. And she's the main DPS, not only for that, but also for timed runs. We've been testing her. She pretty much dominates in every content. So not only does she provide you a shield, has unlimited skill abilities because her core attack uh, re refreshes her skills. Not only does she uh, have some of the best dupe options, she's also one of the prettiest characters out there and also one of the easiest characters to play. So if you're going for re-rolling and you're going for top tier, she and Emma should be your two main options to go for. See, she is pivotal for anyone's account. So highly recommend going for her. Yeah, definitely. And that's uh, just something else I wanted to bring up because we talk about Emma in a damage sense. We talk about her in a damage mm -hmm. sense. Just, a lot of the time with the, the SRs is a bit different, but I find with SSRs, doesn't matter what, like if they're a tank, they're still going to be damage focused because the oh, damage yeah. mitigation isn't really a massive portion of it. You'll find tanks will no. either have big damage or they'll have some sort of supportive capability. Uh, when we look at Wujin Chul later on, like he has the extra movement mechanic mechanics which is like a supportive yep. type ability when we look at bake we've got extra defense break which we'll talk about in a sec but they all have either extra damage or extra supportive capabilities because a raw tank just doesn't cut it in a game like this where you can no, avoid most of the damage so i just wanted to make that one totally. clear because we're about to jump into into bake now uh or beck or whatever his name is uh on his base form <laughs> And yeah. once again, he's another tank, but he's also a really solid unit that brings some good supportive capabilities. I'll let you take it away with Beck. Sure, for sure. And uh, just to real quick on that, we are RPG fans, so we're all accustomed to the whole tank is meant to take damage, not give damage. You're absolutely right. In this game, tanks give a ton of damage. And, and Sal and Beck, going to Beck now, are both two of the best breakers in the game. And that's what a tank represents. They break the break bar. That's usually what they're meant to do. And with him specifically, he has a couple unique things about him. Number one, his basic attack actually breaks the bar. Most other tanks do not have that option. Number two, he's got minus 20 defense down, which is the highest raw defense down of any unit out there. Uh, number three, all of his moves are insane heavy breaks. So he does crazy crazy breaks and not to mention damage on top of that so he comes off of one of your best supports and one of your uh best defense breaks the only issue with beck and this is the the biggest issue i have with him is his animations takes too long and he's vulnerable for bosses that have super armor so that, for example the spider when you're doing your break move when he's up in the air he doesn't come down fast enough the spider can knock him on his ass much of the break bar stays there so i do believe he is a little higher than S. I'll, I would put him S plus still for that option because of the defense and the fact that he breaks everything with basic attacks and regular skills. Um, but he is one level below Min. I would still put him S plus personally, but that's just my take on it. I, th I think S is still reasonable for him. I, I think at global, he would be S plus because Choi is no longer an option and he's even though his death threat isn't as big, he's just a more a, a, a more higher value character at the moment. And because he won't be in the Absolutely. game, now Beck, uh, Beck is your like death shred option, uh, essentially. Mm -hmm. uh, moving on yep. to the next yep. ones, uh, Kang, I'll let you do Kang because I honestly have not even sure. played Kang, uh, but I did okay. have a lot of experience with Lee Bora and uh, Lim. So I'll let you go on Kang. Okay, so... So it's funny with Kang, um, so when, when every, every other person put Kang on a tier list, they put him at his F tier. He was the lowest tier. And I was the only person that put him at S+. And everyone was like, what the hell do you know that we don't? So I showed people some testing. 
beauty of Kang is he is the miniature version of Beck, Silvermane Beck. Like I said to you guys before when we talked about Beck real quick, Silvermane specifically, he has a bleed that's a 0.6% on big opponents. So when you start doing end game content, his stock value goes up drastically. But not only that, when you do uh, bleed on opponents, he also does a debuff on opponents that have bleed that lets you cause 15% more raw damage on that unit for 30 seconds. Uh, and not to mention, he has some of the fastest skills, some of the best ultimates, and he he hits like a Mack truck. So a lot of people that tested him in the beginning didn't actually test him. They just saw, okay, you know, he, his bleed doesn't work on the dragon. So they low rated him. But he is actually considered one of the, if not the top SR in the game and should not be missed out on. If you're looking for a dark unit that does a ton of damage, Kang is your man for sure. The, the one thing I will add in with that um, is my caution with stuff like that is... When I'm building units, uh, especially as free-to-play, if you spend, you don't have the resource issue. But as free-to-play, resources are super tight. Leveling more than three of these characters through your progression is going to be tough. It's hard. Um, so heavily yeah. investing into some of these SRs. And then if you pull like a, a power, sort of quote-unquote power creep of them, then you're going to be starved on resources. That would be my only thing. But once again, you can't wait forever and eventually you have to build ones. And he, like you said, is a great SR option for DPS if you haven't got lucky on any of your other pools. Um, and, and and not to, and not to, yeah, sorry, not, not to mention uh, to, to your point, like I finished my free-to-play account as a challenge account. I finished the entire game with SR weapons and SR characters only. I didn't touch any SSR. So don't undervalue an SR character. Even if there's a power creep, they will still find value in multiple teams that you will use later on. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I've seen. I've seen a. I think I think, mm-hmm. I, think I saw Antho doing it as well with uh, with mm-hmm. uh, no no SSRs. And yeah, it's definitely a doable game. I would argue it's probably more enjoyable doing it that way because the the mm-hmm. challenge it's more of a challenge to get through. But once again, if you're trying to get on leaderboards, that's a whole different story. Um, that's a whole different game. M- moving on to Lee Bora. Now she's one. I like she's one that you get from purchasing i think you can get her for like ten dollars i think you got to purchase like a mm-hmm. dollar a day for 10 days or some shit and yeah. you can get her uh, i actually summoned for her because i was free to play uh, i think she's just a really solid buffing unit with also the extra dark support and i was using uh limb with her which was a kind of nice thing also i had uh um uh, dude, I'm fucking, my brain's farted, but I'm just going to skip that bit. But yeah, I think she's a really solid buffer. The one issue I had with her was she puts this ring down, which when you're inside it, you get buffed. Mm-hmm. And yep. I, I was using her with Lim, who is a mobile character. So I felt yeah. like I was missing out on the peak performance yep. of her due to the way her buff is catered towards that ring. Now, did you have a play around for that? Or did you have anything else you were doing that I just completely missed? Yeah, so exactly how you're supposed to use her. So you put those dark circles down, and any any unit that is a dark unit in there benefits. And also other units will benefit as well because it's called a debuff zone. They take away your debuffs as well too, so there's a bonus to that. Not only that, but she also does something called Charm, which is the counterpart to Min's Punishment, where she will cast anything she does, and it'll do a 15% debuff on the opponent, so you do 15% more damage. So she's great as one of the best supports in the game for dark units, and let alone in general, right? The, the and, and so with with Lim, I had the same problem as you. I was too mobile with him, and what I would like, what I learned to do is I'd run around the opponent and put two circles down because I think her A one allows her to do two circles instead of one. Uh, oh, so that was okay. that's a big benefit, that. yeah, right? That's huge, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's huge. So now you can kind of put the, put that mobility aspect to, to rest, and you have more more room to do that now. So absolutely, she's she's great. Now her biggest issue, and they've already addressed this, is her foxes. That's part of her biggest damage. She, she it was bugged a little bit where she was summoned two foxes instead of three because if you got her to A two, you can summon three foxes, which is more damage. And not to mention, there's still a little bit of an issue which I hope they address. The foxes aren't scaled off of her actual stats, so they don't have any crit or any crit damage. Uh, that scales off of her they have their own and i'm not sure how it works i think it's like five percent crit rate so that's where she kind of falls off a little bit is and i think that rating is perfect for her right now until they fix those problems then she'll go s plus but you're right she's one of the best buffing debuffing units for dark units and they should always work together and so the, the reason i think she's on that lower tier is that min is just a better universal unit and if you have yeah. min you kind of don't need to invest into her yet like later on for min maxing maybe she becomes one but like i said resources are so tight so if i pull a min i'm not going to invest into libora just because you know it's that one role that you've already got filled and you're so limited on resources the next That's one it. is dude how do you say this guy's name how do you say it i got no idea uh, I think it's uh, Lai Tim Gu. I think that's... Am I saying that correctly? Anyway, guys? the dude uh, oh, is probably the coolest character in the game. Up there with Silvermane Beck for me personally. 
really cool just general outfit and he has a bow and i'm a massive fan of bows but this guy is i would i would say he's a high skill cap character when i first got him i thought he sucked because i couldn't play him properly then i learned how yep, to control yep. him and he was absolutely amazing so basically what he has is his q makes him do a slide and then a shot but you can actually play around with your mouse and keyboard to direction that pretty easily while still not losing control that took me a little bit to figure out how to actually yeah. steer him properly so that i wasn't like just running myself into danger and dying essentially um on top of that his e is a charge shot the thing i love about his e is you can wait until you've got the uh, power shift into another character you can click his e then you can power shift into another character bring them in and huh? his animation and damage will finish while you're switching so he has these like really nice unique things to his kit that are fantastic and then on top of that his ultimate is like, honestly one of my favorites in the game when you basically Crazy. change into like the the sharpshooter mode and you get like so many basic yep. attacks that benefit with the extra damage and you just basically pump all those out and then you basically shift him away but i think he was probably the most fun character to play once i figured out how to play him properly and his damage is also really reasonable as well no i totally agree and it's uh it's funny that you said that because this is one of the units that i had a struggle with because i didn't understand his kit that well and then i started playing with him and understanding it so exactly what you said you want to use that mobility skill use it as a as a, almost like a dodge you can't do a perfect dodge but you can get away from a lot of things and not only that when you do use it you also increase your attack power it's stacking up to three times and then your your basic attack becomes a core attack so you shoot three arrows yeah. doing more damage not only that, but he also does break damage. So he actually breaks opponent's bars too. So he's one of the only units that is not a full-on tank that actually does break at the same time. And like you said, his charge shot is incredible because you can just roll, you know, bring someone in with a QTE while he's doing it and the damage still goes off. And that missile mode is nuts. It's eight arrows at 8,000 damage a pop. And right now, guys, keep in mind, crit damage does not work. So when crit damage goes up, those are going to freaking skyrocket. So he is going to be going up. Now, I personally think he deserves an S plus for that dark, dark tier list. Um, I think S is a little bit undermining his abilities and what he brings as a mobility character and overall package. But with crit damage not working, and I can understand where he's at, but I think once we see crit damage like work again, you're going to see him back at the top again where, he, where I think he personally belongs. Yeah. And the next one is another character. I, I didn't play with too many of the SRs. I was just limited on my building capabilities. So I'll let you run through another character whose name I cannot pronounce. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're just going to call her Nam. So Nam is actually um, one of the best SR characters out there. Uh, so she's a tank. She scales off of HP. She does freeze. Uh, pretty much her whole kit is set on freeze. Uh, she's meant to be your breaker. So when you don't have Sal for the beginning, Nam is going to be your server's killer. She's going to be one of the best units you're going to have for killing uh, pretty much AOE content and also server. So she absolutely is a massive, massive DPS tank breaker. So you want to definitely use her as an SR character until you get Sao, and then you just swap the two out. So that's pretty much it. She belongs where she is. That's a perfect rating for her. Yep. The next one I want to look at is Park. Uh, she's kind of falling off the edge mm -hmm. of the screen here, the way I got it set up. But yeah, she, yeah. she yeah. was my pick when I just got the game, read through all the characters. She's the one that I thought had the most utility as an SR unit that I thought would be the most functional. So I'm glad that she ended up getting this high ranking because she has such great grouping capabilities along with amplification yep. and generation. And I just think she's an absolutely fantastic unit for that. And just a great, and she's one of those ones. I feel like she, her value has like anything could happen, but I feel like she's got good long-term value as an SR unit absolutely. because she's not dependent on damage. She just has really good support that I feel like is going to take a while to get uh, outscaled by another unit. 100%. And it's funny you say that because the first video I made about her, my, my actual title was so broken. And everybody's like, what the hell are you talking about? So I actually broke it down and showed the kits. She is the ultimate power gauge killer. Like she, she'll build your power gauge so fast, you won't even know what to do with it. So and you're absolutely right. She's one of the most, yeah, and, and just, one just, of the best utilities just, out there. Just to cut in, the synergy I had, I was using Choi. So yeah. her with Choi, yeah, yeah, yeah. she groups up. So his it's AOE crazy. damage hits everything. And then he wants to yeah. ult as much as he can so that he can reset his cooldowns. Like they just have great synergy. Sorry, I, I had to cut you off. Such good synergy. No, no, no. That's okay. That's okay. And that was a very good point. Absolutely. She she makes everybody. So essentially she makes everybody better around her. She's That's her that's her job. So I put her actually, her and Kang were the two best R's in the game. And I've, I've been saying this from day one about those two. And she highly deserves the praise that she's getting. So I'm glad she's up on this tier list where she's at. Um, the only thing to 
to also note, a lot of people don't know this, that when she does her circle um, wind move that does, hits targets and get, raises the, the power gauge, it, all, it actually stuns targets. So like the spider boss, for example, if you don't want him from going up healing, if you do that before he gets super armor, the boss is stuck there for eight to nine seconds. So you can just bring in your raw DPS while that's happening and just destroy the boss before it even goes up for a heal. So a little tip for you guys. So she is incredibly good. So definitely deserves where she's at. Yep. And then for Huang Dong Dong So, uh, this dude, I... I honestly thought, like, my take when I first got into the game, I thought Wu Jin Chul, with, like, three dupes, was going to be better than uh, him maxed out. That was my take. I thought he was going to just, like, combo well. We'll talk about him in a sec. But this dude, he just feels like raw damage, and I just... I, I guess when you look at him compared to all the other SSRs, I mean, he's on the same par with these, but I wouldn't say he's on the same level as Lim or, Be or Beck. I, I just don't know how to feel. So I want to hear what you think is essentially what I'm saying. Okay. So here is the funny thing about this character. So I finally got around to testing him properly. He has the highest multiplication or multipliers in the game of any unit. We're talking about any unit on that roster right now. He destroys them when it comes down to damage. So I started using an A1 and A2 version. I started testing and he actually ended up being the highest damage dealing unit in the game. Scaling off defense, barely ever dying. And his, his all, most of his skills are all charge up skills. So... He is a dark horse unit that everyone has slept on. So I'm telling you now, when crit damage is back to working again, you're probably going to see him as maybe first to second top DPS in the game, S plus tier wind unit for sure. And I think a lot of people just assumed from other people's tier list that he wasn't that good. When you start doing the testing, you see the amount of impact he has. He's And not to mention, t the new chapter's Tusk is also a wind uh, res wind wind weak unit so the newest boss he is in the korean version the top dps right now for that boss so dark horse definitely going to be top tier for sure 100%. That, I, I love hearing stuff like that that's that's really solid yeah. but the one thing i will say is he is pretty much raw damage raw damage like the, raw damage and survivability yeah that's exactly what he is yeah then yeah. uh, I want to jump on to Wu Jin Chul because he's our last SSR mm -hmm. unit. And then we'll quickly do a brief roundup of the lower tier sure. um, SRs because the, 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 I feel like when you once you've looked at all these units, you're going to be able to get a bunch of these and sort out your account. Sure. Uh, Wu Jin Chul, we get him for free from the login event. We get him his weapon for free from the login event. He's a character that I, re I really want to max one out and test it. I don't know if you've tested him maxed out because it just reads really cool to me. He basically increases your amount of dodges and he's all based around dodging and then he has other abilities that reset the cooldown on other abilities and then reduces cooldowns based on dodging and i thought that whole snowball effect i thought he was just going to absolutely face roll once you get him max duped but he feels really average at low dupes so i'm curious to see your thoughts on him yeah, that, and that's exactly it. At the end of the day, his utility is adding for Jinu an extra dodge or himself. He's based off of dodge. Exactly it. The biggest issue with him is he's a great breaker. He's a good damage dealer. His his biggest impact that he has is his range. His range sucks as a melee DPS. Everything is very low range. Everything is hard to... Even when you QTE, sometimes he'll come in. He'll miss the boss completely. I don't know if that's, a, that's an issue with the game or not, but... When it comes down to SSR units, he's just the most underwhelming unit when it comes down to power. And I think that's where most of the problems stem. He is a great utility unit, but what he lacks is breakability. Well, not breakabilities. He's good for that. He, what he lacks is power and damage. When you compare him to the other, like, for example, Dong Su, yes, you get a break unit, but you miss out on 1,000%, 2,000% more damage, right? Where, where when you compare him to somebody like, I don't know, uh, a Beck, again, good, good, uh, you miss out the defense threat, but you get an extra dodge. So you kind of have to compare and contrast what's more important for you. The biggest issue I think around him is the fact that the blessing stones that you eventually unlock give you a lot of the utility he already does. Like give you an extra dodge, take your cooldowns away, etc. So you kind of replace them slowly over time. So I think we're going to see a buff for him eventually, but he is definitely the worst SSR unit in the game, even at the highest level. Yeah, sick. And let's go through the rest of them because I feel like with all those units, most people mm -hmm. are going to be able to build a team out of the stuff we've yes. gone through. Is there any mm -hmm. key notes you want to put on any of these SR units on why someone might want to build them on their account? Yeah, so the only... I'll mention three honorable mentions. We'll just call them that for now on. So first off, Jino. Jino 
is actually the best breaker, believe it or not, in the game. What his his two breaks probably do the most amount of break damage in terms of a bar. Not not to mention that you actually get an A5 version of him practically for free by doing your challenge mode. And when you do get that A5 version, he drops a potion on the floor for Jinu or other characters. And if you pick up that potion, it gives you attack up, uh, it gives you HP up, gives you a shield, and provides you with uh, additional damage. And that that that's every time he pops in. So he's an under under like valued character, which actually deserves more respect. So I would say definitely as a free-to-play player focus on him if you don't have a, a good breaker especially a light breaker um and then also i know everybody hates this guy but huang dong suk the brother of don su uh one of the best dark characters almost impossible to kill because every time he does a break or a move he increases his max hp and he does the same thing for Jinu as a support plus he does a stun that's there's no with, without any resistance so a uh, really good character to use as a dark character and then the last one is in fact anna ruiz on the left she is a great poison unit and uh, also can do bind on opponents to get you out of uh, tough situations and if you get her to a5 as a free to play over time her poison does a hundred percent of her attack damage rather than 30 so you actually increase your value at end game content quite drastically by doing that so those three i would 100 percent focus on Kim Chul is a nice option if you want a shielder. I just find he doesn't give you enough mobility. He's too slow for a lot of his a lot of his things, but he does provide insane survivability. So he's also one that you could definitely use if you don't want to use Juno. But yeah. those are probably the best ones I would go with. Yeah, once again, like comparing him to Juno is it's that awkward thing is like if you're struggling at the game like no mm -hmm. offense man but if you got skill issues like then he's probably going to be the better one but if you're surviving easy 100%. then you'd rather be bringing that extra utility of break as opposed Absolutely. to survivability and that's sort of the way it goes but i think that is pretty Absolutely. much a good roundup of the tier list once again guys uh, is there any other final things you want to you want to mention about uh tier list or anything like that yeah, so keep a lookout. The tier list will be updated on my end as well, too. With the crit damage, obviously, we spoke about it many times. Uh, the only other thing I would keep in mind is remember that all the testing that we do uh, these tier lists are meant to be updated constantly because there's brand new metas that come out, brand new units that come out. So the only thing I would say is with what we discussed in the beginning, Child will definitely be top tier. They're not going to release a unit this hype and not make her one of the best units in the game. Uh, the only other thing I would say is Joe Lee in, or Joe He in the bottom, the girl, the water girl that it heals, her stock value has gone up quite drastically as well too. But I'll talk more about that on my tier list a little bit. But everyone else uh, is good here. So great job, Vulcan. Great job, Giku. Good job on this tier list, guys. It looks pretty solid. All right, sick. Once again, I, I didn't have anything to do with piecing this together. This was all Giku, you, and Pride Win. So massive shout out to you guys. Once again, go show Pain Blade some love. I'll leave his link in the description. Dude is absolutely sweating in this game. So go go check out his streams. Uh, ask him any questions you want. Uh, and also go show Giku some love as well because he's another great bloke in the community doing some amazing things. But as always, guys, that is going to be for this one. Thanks for watching. Hope you have an awesome day and we'll look forward to seeing you in the next one. Cheers.